call a meeting to order. Um, let's see. First thing is a welcome, everybody. And um, if there's any uh, change to the agenda or public comment. Got one fuel question I want to sure. update the board on when that time comes. Highway fuel. Oh, oh highway fuel. <clears throat> Okay. I had a general question. Uh, town meeting day is tomorrow, right? Correct. Is, the, uh, is there a Zoom link that's available for that as well? Uh, no, no Zoom. I, it's, it should be live stream on YouTube at starting at nine o'clock. Okay. Do you know if the Forest Hill uh, topic is going to be presented? It's not on the warning. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's go on to public hearing. Town meeting, bond article, uh, fire truck borrowing, article two, shall general oblig obligation bonds or notes of the town of Hyde Park in an amount not to exceed $600,000 be issued payable over a term of not more than 10 years to fund the purchase and equi equipping of the fire truck for the Hyde Park Town Fire Department at a total cost of $600,000. So. Required public hearing. That's yep. Here for. Does anybody have any fire comments or questions? Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> the man is here. <laughs> I had a question on that. Sure. Uh, is there a associated interest rate no, the borrowing is a maximum dollar amount to borrow. That's the question. The interest okay. rate, the specific truck, the timing of the delivery, all that business will come later. That'll all be factored in, basically. Yeah, under that cap. Let's okay, say. thanks. Of the 600 borrowing, yep. My, my only comment was that I hope the select board and the fire department take into account how what type of fire trucks we have affect other rules in town. It, it's our zoning regulations keep us to an 8% grade driveway, which is ridiculously flat for Northern Vermont. So all I'm asking, and the reason they keep us to that, if it's often cited that public safety vehicles can't get up and down. So all I'm asking is that the select board and the fire department Use this six hundred thousand to buy a truck that can go up and down hills. It might be as simple as not as complicated as what type of drive it has, but even if the wheel wells are just big enough to keep chains on it all winter. Really? Yeah. But this eight percent grade is ridiculously shallow, even compared to surrounding towns. I, I agree 100 percent I dealt with that Ron did we get get rid of that in our zoning yeah the eight percent is gravel uh, ten percent if it's paved and there's no grade requirement if you're within 200 feet of a public roof right. so, so it does just, it does still exist uh, let's just yeah. buy one can go up and downhill yeah. what's your name sir Pete Swain Pete okay any other questions? Um, Short and sweet. I guess so. Yeah. It's worth your drive down here. <laughs> <laughs> the only question I had on the article, and again, I'm on the board, and maybe I missed this, but it says, shall the voters appropriate 50,000 of the unassigned general fund balance to the stormwater capital reserve? What was the reason for that one, Rock? Just to educate myself. He's Art, 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 Article eight. He's oh, oh, okay. Yeah. He's Sorry, let's get through the bond. Yeah, let's no, get through the bond. Yes. Right. Okay. Finishing up the minutes. Right? Yeah, on the bond. Right. Yeah, yeah. I can go over that in one second. Okay. So now, now this. After the bond, we have uh, moderator Tom Andre Paul Nesky here. And we invited him a couple of weeks ago so that we could walk through the articles to 
sort of hash out things or say who's going to what, do what. Sometimes the board members will take an article. Sometimes they'll all look to the chair to run the whole meeting. So that's the kind of discussion tonight. Paul knows that um, he's got to lead and remind people all the time to come down to the mics. If the people don't hold the mic or talk into the mic, not on top of it, but you know, 18 inches away, it won't be picked up on the recording. So it gets impossible to do minutes later, especially, you know, na names, you know, if they, sometimes people skip their name. That's really the only rehearsal part we do. What do you, how do you want to run the meeting is your own question, but better now than at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. And then everybody can help Paul by remind, you know, reminding people that start to speak uh, without announcing their name first. The meetings always, you've been to enough of them now, all of you to know that they go much smoother when everybody's on the same plane. Yeah. And understanding what each role is. So what we're up to, I'd like to see at each time we have these major meetings for the public there. <laughs> and, and all things can happen, as you well know, if you've been there. So uh, if anyone is going to take charge of a specific article and speak to it, it's nice for me to know in advance. So, so the question <coughs> goes there immediately so that the questions are posed so that I don't know the answers like you just mentioned to the $50,000, I was going to inquire about the 40 myself. Okay. <laughs> and so, so all of these things, you know, and each one of you have a position where you know more than everybody else, I would imagine, right? We hope. Right. <laughs> and so, so everything isn't left to the, to the chair. Let's see where I was at. The sideboard, it maybe it's transitioned down through where, where it serves the public and you. <clears throat> Certainly not me. Yeah. I, I'm going to direct traffic as best I can to keep, keep people out of, out of your face too much. What I've seen in the past worked. Yeah. I know it's been a few years so, since. So I had a, my quick question then it would be uh, right away, uh, exclusive of your work, but who is going to, do you know who would be there as representing the restorative center and the home health, for example? I don't know. It, it, yeah, they've been advised to bring a representative. So I think that's how you would open right. that same question is how you would open that article. Well, I just want to know if you know. No, they no, no name yet. Made it too, no, no, just the group. Yeah, so the, right. then the other is if we get down to Article 6, the $40,000 reserve fund money, so if you want to employ that's a, a little bit of a different take as to which one do with some extra funds. Just wondering who's going to speak to that. Yeah, anything that's not by a group is usually by select board. So if it's the Lamoille Restorative, you would say, hello, everything else, anybody here. Right. And then the rest of them would be the board deciding, are you gonna, all going to respond? Is Brian going to respond to everything as an intro? Uh, that ain't going to work. Is there some that others have? Just share some burden. Yeah. 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 So that, we'll have to go through that article. That article. Yeah. And we'll figure out who's going to. Yeah. So it's just what I avoid by doing what you're doing now, where you speak in advance of it to say, This is, I make the motion we approve article such and such, and on that basis, I'd like to visit with you concerning it when there's other discussion, of course, and you can, you can move on however you want to do it. I'm, I just want to know what you want to do so I can help you. Sure. Appreciate it. So then we should read the article. Is that what you I'm are recommending? You're going to read it. Gonna okay. Read it and then and I'm going to turn to somebody. I'm going to be looking for a motion right away. Got it. Okay. That, that gets things rolling smoothly rather okay. than waiting for somebody from the floor. To right. Get a negative vote. Yeah. Then we're off. Then we're off the road. Got it. Yeah. Okay. We want to avoid that as much as possible. Okay. But, you know, it's better served for for the resident, yeah. the voter who's sitting here, that it goes smoothly, so they understand what's happening regularly as we. Okay. So, if we get a, a positive motion, we get it on the floor, and then whoever made the motion, it, hopefully, it could be that person that would speak for it right away. If there was something peculiar about the about it that uh, they should know, so they can they you place the motion out here for them to vote on, and I think we'd like to see it done. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to spend the time to do it. Yeah, yeah. So. So the same holds true for when we get down to the listers, which is uh, in some communities that's been a, a thorn. Not, right. Last year was a thorn. We're coming back again. Right. Yeah. So uh, we don't have any. Right. 
<laughs> and we can't get anybody to be a listener. Oh, I don't have the second page. So we'll go through those and figure out. Yeah, for the initial page one. <clears throat> yeah. Well, should we do that with him now? So yeah. he knows? Yeah, that's what yeah. we do right now. Oh, okay. here. I thought you meant we're going to do it later. So. So who needs to, so to start, you need somebody, I get usually the chair because we have to, to elect a moderator. Right. So the chair. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And some at the, previously when I was a moderator, start, I would I would start the meeting off, <laughs> and then turn it over when it came to the moderator's position to be voted on. Yeah, and that's what that'll work. Yeah, yeah. So that'd be Brian, and then I'll. Brian will ask the question. Yeah. Do we have anybody for nomination? Nominations for Brian. yeah moderator. Right. She'll say you, and uh, we'll all vote for it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I know how much you want it. <laughs> <laughs> like and we do have glue for your <laughs> shoes. <laughs> They're gonna hold it. So that, then once that's done, then we, then we go and get yeah. articles. And uh, so the ones of concern are, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll work with the restorative and the home health as I see it. Just do the best for them. Okay. And then um, I, I think you, what we might want to add to that is that the reason they're separate is because they're asking for an increase, right? It's nice to say that up front. I suspected that's what it was. Right. And and that's why they're there. So they're it would help take let him have what they got last year. I think it was eight thousand, wasn't it? The line item was eight thousand. They submitted a there's two articles for special groups. They both came in different ways. The first group specifically asked for the 9600 or whatever in a petition that was signed by enough people to be a ballot petition that's the way the article had to be pushed to the voters okay they called me after the warning was already done and said uh i don't think we wanted to do that i think we wanted to ask for another 1500 right back to the eight mm -hmm. it's too late they the art the petition should have right. gone out as 1500 more on top of their right. normal so that's how that happened so there's zero in the town budget, which makes them, I think there's going to be more than one person because it was zeroed out in the town budget, which normally it's at $8,000. The other one, they changed their funding formula, which we don't allow for that in the policy. Right. So they just, they went by the 2020 census population, which automatically boosted up the request. Oh, right. And we don't, we don't account for that in the policy. So any increase goes back to the voters. That's right. So they're also zero in the town budget. But what did they get last year? That's why I'm looking for both of them. That That's in the budget report. But right. Don't have it up. Turn to the back page of the budget, Brian. Yeah, you can yeah. see that. I'm trying to watch the waiting room as well as they No, it's the last yeah. last line in the budget. It's like page twelve, maybe or thirteen. Somewhere in the budget part. Yeah, that's the last page. Okay. You'll see the zeros for FY24. So yeah. They had the restorative center had 900 last year. And home health had 8862. They just do funny numbers, okay. Well, it's a, based on cow or something, right? Yeah, formula. Yeah. Four okay. Because okay. I bet you people will get up and then forget to say what they had last year.
So, so what was, which one are you speaking The to? restorative center got 900 last year. And home health and hospice got 8,862. So one of them is a fairly big increase and one of them is not much at all. Okay, reserve funds. <clears throat> this came up because remember our, our toilets and everything fell apart here. We didn't have anything, a line item to make sure that our offices were taken care of, <laughs> from my understanding and recollection. And the, G, and the guy in Valley Hall asked for somebody to start worrying about that building as they make more improvements, they're gonna have replacement costs and repairs as well. So it's kind of a combination of GVH and the town office and some of the other, you know, we ever had like a, a shed or a sign or anything, you know, anything else that's not covered by another reserve fund. So it's like a catch all for any other. So highways yeah. covered, rec has some, library has some. Yeah. Nothing for everybody else except for this one pot of emergency funds. So that's what that was about. I think yeah. we're done with reserve funds. <clears throat> We've been adding incrementally. Yeah, I, think got right. I think we have everything covered with this one. I, unless somebody comes up with something new. Okay, who wants so, to explain it? For the reserve fund? Yeah. I'll do the uh, uh, one for the uh, assessor, if somebody wants to do that one. I can do the article six, if that's okay. what I mean. Okay. And I'll do seven. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you <clears throat> the assessor? So basically, we just tried advertising and doing everything to try to find somebody. We couldn't. So we had Nimrick that was doing it before. And uh, and so we've taken this avenue of trying to join with the uh, um, other towns. And it settled with Johnson and us. <clears throat> and we're looking to hire somebody for the position. So the communities have been together. So they share a hired. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing with Johnson. Yeah. Jo Johnson and us, we, we tried to get Elmore <coughs> and uh, Wilkett involved with it too, but they backed out. And so it's just uh, Johnson and Hyde Park at this time. And we're looking to hire somebody uh, hopefully soon to fill that role so it, it won't keep uh, getting behind on it. So that's that one, Six, uh, Article 8, uh, voters appropriate 50000 for unassigned general fund balance to the Stormwater Capital Reserve Fund. Yeah, Matt had a question on that earlier. The, yeah. the stormwater is in preparation for some projects that are coming up, um, bridge and culvert projects. We have a design grant that's in process now for the East Main Street culvert which at some point we'll need match money. We have the Wickham Island Bridge and the Garfield Bridge, which the select board's already committed to funding 25% of those projects, design money, scoping money, from stormwater, ideally. And then what that does is it preserves the highway for the highway equipment, which is the biggest need right now, is trying to get on schedule with highway equipment. So rather than have, stormwater could be eligible under highway because it's broad, but I think it's better to bring stormwater and bridges and culverts into its own thing and try to leave the highway for highway equipment and bigger items. Cause that, anyway, you get the idea. If you can get a schedule on highway and it's rolling through and it's all good and you're good. Stormwater is going to be like this because mm -hmm. projects take so long in the design. You can't predict when they're going to come ready for construction or you engineer. Want, you don't have a rough balance. It was like what? 300 and some thousand of them in our unassigned general funds right now. No, it's higher than Susan that. has them in front of her. The unassigned general funds? No, the reserve funds. Oh, reserve reserve funds. funds. As of, oh, well, we have a total. Okay, where's the total? <laughs> no, each fund is. Each, yeah. They're all separate. Right, right. Which one are you interested in? Right. Not the one that's a deficit. I just want to know what the unassigned is. So, <laughs> the total, I guess. Oh, well, yeah. you, I don't yeah. know. There's like 10 of them. The, well, the I can count it up probably. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's asking two different questions. The unassigned fund balance yeah, is different than that. 
Matt. 17. Okay. I'm listening. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah. The undersigned fund balance we just got in the 2020 audit. Mm -hmm. And we're in a couple months, we're going to get the 21 audit with another unassigned fund balance. And then we're going to get a 22 audit with the current unassigned fund balance. So those are three yeah, snapshots in time. What we have today is you talk to Jennifer and that's changing all the time. Right. So she can get a pretty good hold of it if it's not audited. The only audited unassigned is from three years ago now, which is not as useful as what Jennifer can project upstairs by what will we have an unassigned by right. Mark, you know. only because yeah. I'm new to the game still, you know, like I don't understand completely, you know, like obviously, like Jennifer said, it's changing all the time. So we would never create a deficit or ask the voters to create a deficit for stormwater when we don't have the money. Correct. Cap, you know, right. Right. <laughs> you, you wouldn't, you know, you, you wouldn't move, so you couldn't move more right than that. Right, right now, there's, a, there's, it's all accounting, basically, is what you're right. talking about. So the accounting is the overall town unsigned fund balance is good. And then we break that up into mi individual funds, which can be positive or negative, but the overall is good. And it usually goes it's negative, so like with right. uh, stormwater, because we're waiting for that big reimbursement from the November 19th from storm. From right. mm -hmm. So you're going to run a negative there, even though overall, when you smoosh everything together, the town is still has plenty of money in the unassigned. You're just sort of showing where your refunding has to go when you get that grant. So if you see a negative in those individual funds, those are anticipated revenues that aren't there yet. This would be the dollar she's putting in that. The unassigned the really is a accounting snapshot yeah, right. on June 30. That's the only time you really have an audited unassigned fund balance. Right. So so gonna handle those article eight. Yeah, like this has ARPA funds, this has everything in it. So Correct. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And and that's not the that's how what we've already assigned, and that's the balances in them. And those are the dollars that she is investing in CDs for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when when we decide to do something new in June, here yeah. you'll have that question of the million dollars coming back <clears> in June. If you roll that into another CD because some of the capital projects on the list aren't being done or they're delayed, then you can do the whole million. If a couple of those projects get the green light, you're not going to have the million and you'll do a half a million for six months or four months, whatever you guys come up with. And that's what Jennifer's challenge is, is trying to work the capital expenses with the available cash and try to keep that moving at three or four percent versus we are under one percent or zero for the last it seems like eight years almost. It's been a long time when we're almost earning no interest. Right. So it's good to have it, but it takes a little more work, obviously, and somebody to manage it. So who don't who wants to speak to Article Nine? Article Eight. <clears throat> eight. I mean, sorry. Yeah. I'll, I'll it. Okay. In Article Nine, the voters approve the additional addition uh, to any other appropriations approved in prior articles a total general fund expenditures amount for the period of July 1st 2023 through June 30th 2024 of the three million eighty nine thousand of which two million six hundred and forty eight thousand seven hundred shall be raised by property taxes and four hundred and forty thousand 300 by non-property uh, tax revenue. So usually I would just read that and I would need, I would need a motion right away. Yeah. To, to get it moving. Okay. So we need a, a first and a second. Okay. And so you commonly wait a little bit to hopefully get a second from the 299 people that are sitting there. To get, <laughs> you want them in on the course. That's right. To get things flowing, but you're yeah. gonna get it started. Yeah. And then comes the questions that I'll like ask for, and then somebody's going to have to have their nose yeah. to the grindstone to answer those questions. Now, you're looking commonly to the chairperson to make the full go where it needs to go. Yeah. Same, same idea. We've had chair do the whole budget and go to the first page, first page of the budget where you have your tax rate projection. Yeah which has the summary of the biggest changes, the 3,000 or more. And that's all that was done was the review of that one page with the tax rate projection at $50 more per 100,000 assessed value. 
Um, and then questions from the floor. What was that? What page is that on? Uh, 11. Uh, because other, other years you've hi highway, police, cemetery, and, as a, and you walk through the whole way. In the last bunch of years, it's been just that summary of the budget. Any questions? Let's hear what the questions are. Yeah. Originally, about 10 years ago, it was everybody going over every budget line item. Oh. And every year that's gone by, it's been less and less because people are like, that's too much. We're, yeah. We want to get, we want to start at the, at the, the result of it, which is right. like $50 more per year right. per 100000 right. and then go into the highlights of the budget. Right. So I think that's been the last few, few years when it's been in public, you know, well, maybe the last two. Right. Sure. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. And, it's, and then we're and all going to have, if we get lots of questions, what? we're all jumping in. Right? Oh, yeah. You need to have all the answers to every question. I mean, well, and just point you folks, you know, if they look and, and they're here for each exactly. part, it tells you so much that went exactly. out. Exactly. Well, and isn't what, that's kind of what tonight's about, too, for people to come sure. and ask that's questions. That's what you get the big pay for. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'd like to you, Brian, to make the motion to approve. Yep. Okay, and then uh, Article 10, shall the voters approve the payment of property taxes to the town treasurer in four equal installments on 32 VSA 4792 as listed below the, with delinquent taxes and assessments have char uh, charged against them uh, an 8% commission after the fourth installment BSC, okay, and an interest charged uh, of 1% uh, per month or a fraction thereof for the first three months and thereafter 1.5% per month, one fraction thereof from the due date of such tax. Such interest shall be imposed on the fraction of the month as if it were an entire month Payments are due in the hands of the treasurer by 4 p.m. on the below due dates. Only uh, official USPS PS, uh, cancellations marks will be accepted if postmarked on or before the due date. Uh, first installment is on Thursday, August 31st, 23. Second is on Wednesday, November 15th, 23. And the third installment is to be paid on Thursday, February 15th, 24. And fourth installment is to be paid on the Wednesday, the May 15th, 2024. Who wants to handle that? So moved. No. Okay. <laughs> Was that a yes or no? Yeah, I okay. can. I don't think anyone's going to question that. I don't think it's going to be it's been that way for... Forever. <clears throat> to transact <coughs> any other business that may legally come before a meeting. So then it's just a warning. So, uh, it looks innocent, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I, the only concern I have is that commonly there might be resolutions that would like to be read. Or if somebody wants to make a motion that they don't realize that it's only going to be acted on as a resolution. It's not, nothing binding here. So I'll make a statement if that gets going. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, the only concern right now is is what transpired the other day regarding the yeah <laughs> uh, forest hills yeah. yeah and the development of the river so it, um, the science of it is going to get exposed perhaps of what what occurred and there'll be perhaps some discussion there so how best to handle that. We've got a statement that uh, our attorney has given us, and okay. that'll be, uh, I'll probably read it tonight. Or I'll read it now, actually. Let me just bring it up here. I'd rather have a paper version of it, but I got this here and put my eyes to the test. Uh, generally, select boards cannot uh, appeal decisions of their, of their own DRBs uh, per the Vermont Supreme Court decision in Rosette, Rosetti versus CT, CCTA, uh, 165 Vermont 61, 1996 attached, and Sanborn 
versus Town of Essex, 146, Vermont, 419, 1985. The theory is generally that... I didn't get that. You aren't there. <laughs> um, the theory is generally that unless the DRB has exceeded the scope of its authority, the select board cannot second guess the board's uh, discretionary decisions under the zoning regulations. The select board appoint, uh, appointed members of the DRB and entrusted them to uh, make the discretionary decisions. Thus, to allow select boards to, in effect, uh, second guess, the wisdom of the DRB would be undermine the DRB's uh, autonomy. As a result, the select board is generally bound by the findings of fact and conclusions of law in dec decisions of the DRB. And the select board's appeal of a DRB decision would be viewed skeptically by the environmental decisions uh, on appeal. In this uh, instant, uh, it does, doesn't sound, uh, sound like there's any allegations that the DRB exceeded its authority. For example, by regulating wastewater disposal or something else, so the appeal uh, would be an attempt by the select board or more accurately, an attempt by the neighbors to get the select board to, to second guess the DRB decision, which is prohibited. And that's from our attorney. And that's what will be probably read tomorrow if it comes up. So. Well, I think we can also tell, you know, they are having a meeting on the 10th. Yes, absolutely. You know, so to refer people that that's their, you know, to go and talk with them. And, yeah. Right, right. Well, and talk with them and hear our concerns and see if they can work together to. Absolutely. Sort something out. Absolutely. But it's, it's sort of the long and the short of it is basically the select board has there isn't anything we can do. We have no legal standing. So, so we want to do diffuse that right away. So we don't. Yeah. No, I'll read that right off. Uh, right. You know, if it comes up, I'll, I'll mention it. There's oh, a statement. I can't believe it won't come up. Okay. Yeah. So, Are you guys right. going to be there? Plan it. You know, we've got the. You be there in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, At town meeting. Okay. What time is it? Nine. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been. Not cool. Suffering. What were you going to say, Paul? <laughs> so the other, the other issue is that sometimes we are talking about power and the structure with science of electricity and how it's going to be presented. And, uh, so I'm not sure if we're going to hear anything in the all resolution form or some discussion thereof. You don't have any jurisdiction over the law. It doesn't like it. No. <laughs> no. So <laughs> it's not always known by people that Right. Yeah, well, this that's explains it. That's out of our jurisdiction. As Matt has said, as being on the board, what he's learned is how little authority we have. Exactly. Right? <laughs> you know, it really is. Yeah. Cider and dick Colossians. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, you've got, done everything very well, by the way, with how you structured your, your motions. And, your articles. And, uh, so you can't get caught like the, the fire truck. You can't get caught saying that you're going to find is that you're going to pay, you're going to buy a fire truck this year for six hundred thousand dollars. Then you get to town meeting and somebody says, "Well, we can finance this, can't we? Save a lot of money this year. Right. Appropriated for taxes this year, but you just you advertise six hundred thousand and now the interest and everything over thirty year period is going to cost you eight hundred and ten. <laughs> and who did that is not kosher. Right. Yeah. So, so you've settled it by answering the question already earlier yeah. that even with interest, it's not going to exceed $600,000. Okay. And that has to be clearly known to everybody before we, when we get there that that's what you have to do. Yep. At least when somebody would do it. Um, point of clarification. It's not going to be that clear. 
the article is only specific to granting the select board the power to apply to the bond bank in an amount not to exceed six hundred thousand, or borrow commercially up to six hundred thousand dollars. There's no uh, specific language in the article that caps the purchase price at six hundred thousand. It may be implied, and you may, your statement was an implication, but it's not a result of the article. Okay. Just be clear about that. So, okay. what do we can buy? We, if it ends up being 650000 the long term debt is six hundred. So, I, I wasn't given that as an answer earlier. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. But you, know, you can spend whatever you want, but you can only borrow six hundred. Correct. Yeah, it's a yeah. fine line because when I went to the fire department, I said, you know, if we had no other money, what is the dollar amount? Right now, it's about what, 580 or something like that. Well, you know, we're not gonna ask for 580, so ask for 600, maybe you'll come under that with trade or whatever, but all those are unknown right now. Okay. So just, I don't wanna make it clear that that's a cap. That's that's why I, you don't wanna do that because it may be 600 to $1,000 right. and you don't wanna to apply to voters that it's a cap because that's not exactly right. Okay. 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 Any more updates on that that you can share? Or not really. Tell, tell them what the plan is if there's a positive vote. Tyler Shocket. <laughs> Can't wait to retire. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. You'll be running for that phone and out of care in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so so what, what's oh, the vote? If, we, if, if it passes, yeah. We talked with three manufacturers. The passes are going to get all the off of you. Sit down with them. They're going to give us a final number. And they kind of give us a budget number right now. And you know, give us a final number and then we're going to sell you. That will also include your trade in. You'll also get all that information and then you can bring it back to the board <coughs> to talk about it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. And they would do the same thing up in North High Park, except go to two boards. Right. Which we did this year. Yeah, last, yeah. Right. last 12 months, you figured that right. out. Right, so the passes come out on Wednesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, whatever, we'll check in home with the three senior backers and set up a time with them to come sit with us. And, and what was the build date that you had estimated? A year and a half, two years. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's not going to be quick. Right. I mean, that means the bond payments hit uh, FY28. So the, these these outfits have got a truck already, or you'd have to order the truck and then no, yeah, you got to order it. And, and then you got to so get a kind of chassis hole. But well, they all say they all they all said I said from well, the time we sign the contract saying we want you to build it, what's the build time? They said a year and a half to two years. So they probably do. They probably have the trucks one, already. One, the one you're getting rid of was already at the dealer. I don't know. Right. And, and they probably do too. They probably talk to international freight line all these companies. They probably have so many trucks allocated to them every year. So they can do that, you know, because like you said, otherwise it'd be year and a half where you can get cabin chassis. <laughs> so I'm sure they do have trucks allocated to them already. I heard the uh, Forest Hill topic mentioned earlier, and it sounds like we're back to um, fire infrastructure. So I was just wondering if uh, we missed an opportunity to speak on that, or if that's going to be coming up here shortly. It's going to be coming up shortly. Thanks. Anything else, Paul? Anything else? We want to be as supportive as possible. Yep. Yep. Great. Okay. So then we'll move on to the Forest Hill Residential Care Home. I read the uh, the article there. I don't know if everybody heard it. Uh, I'll be reading it again tomorrow at the, at the meeting. Um, but uh, the select board uh, uh, cannot undermine uh, the choices made by uh, the uh, DRB board um, since we uh, elect uh, those people. So. Uh, a point. A point to yeah. To do that job. Yeah. Do you have any other questions on? People have their hands up. I don't know. 
Um, yeah, I, I just have a comment, I guess, that I'll make, which is uh, something I think everyone everyone should just be aware of, which is that Vermont statutes uh, provide individuals um, with a right to submit an appeal if there was a procedural issue during the DRB meeting, uh, which resulted in them not being included as an interested party. I was not listed as an interested party, and I do share a border uh, with the Forest Hill residential property. Um, so I'm not going to state any claims on whether or not we're going to move on that, but I do want to make people aware of that uh, that statute being present. Thank you. And that's feedback that uh, we've received from multiple uh, law firms at this point. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I would like just some clarification as to whether or not the DRB was aware when they were approving a permit update for a crisis care facility that that was code for a low barrier homeless shelter. That's a question for them. You have to ask them. Yeah. yeah. Are they not present at this meeting? No. No. I thought it was a subgroup of the select committee. What did she say? No, I'm sorry, what did what? I thought it was a subgroup of the committee. So okay. Yeah. Um, that, that's where people don't they right, just understand they that this the DRB has their own hearings and their own meetings. It's separate to us. Did is you there, hear what is there a way for them to is there a way for that question to be reached out to somebody, Ron? They they should be able to reach to Mary Walls, correct? So that question should be able to be reached out to Mary Walls. And, then, and well at this at this point, the DRB's decision is the DRB speaking on that matter. The only way that those facts or findings or supplemental questions come out is under an appeal where everything can be revisited. So the way the system works is the select board appoints the DRB, the DRB hears the matter, they issue a written decision with permit conditions typically, the appeal process to reconsider anything or raise an administrative due process issue is to the superior court, not to the select board or any other town entity. It immediately goes from the DRB to the court system, and that gets resolved there. The, the DRB in Hyde Park does not have any legal standing at this point. They, they have their written decision. So at this, at what happens at the court process is the court acts as the DRB again, and we can limit the topics to be discussed, or they can talk about the whole matter before that went before the DRB. So it can be uh, looked at as a, dub a double review a little bit, but any party appealing would raise questions called the statement of questions. And those questions could be as narrow as, uh, we had one, recent one that said, I, I disagree with the DRB's decision. I want the court to act on Saturday hours for a commercial uh, permit. And that was the only matter that the court took up. Other people may say that the whole bylaw wasn't followed and then the court basically acts as a DRB at that point. So any, any party, interested party that, get part, that gets party status would be able to raise those kind of questions. But the DRB is out of it at this point. They, 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 they're done with their decision. Oh. <coughs> okay. Any further questions regarding the uh, Forest Hill Residential Care Home. Let's see the hands up. She trying to talk. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did I tell you guys the bathroom was totally working? Okay. Uh, that's a good we thing. We got a door. <laughs> I think that wants to talk. No, she's unmuted. I think she could talk if she. Yeah. Uh, Beth? Oh, no, she's muted again. Yeah. I guess my other question is I'm I'm just wondering if there's any like economic impact assessment or feasibility study that's been conducted or or shared on property value impacts of this facility entering the neighborhood, um, what the feasibility study looks like for this property. 
what security concerns have been factored into this property. We haven't really heard anything about that. You know, for some of us, our property is our, our primary um, retirement investment. Um, so this is a serious concern um, just to, to understand what the, the, the projected economic impact is for my property value as well as safety. Yeah, we understand your question, what you're saying. And uh, I think that would have to come up at the, uh, um, on the 10th at that meeting yeah, at, their, at their informational meeting yeah or in the private appeal where is information regarding that informational meeting found i wasn't aware of that same you're talking about the march 10th, 10th meeting yeah. you guys can speak. i don't know what i'm talking about because i haven't received any information so any any informational sessions or information regarding those would be helpful to know or where i can find that i can send you the flyer and it's posted on your web? It's hosted by the LCH, correct? So yeah. the LCH is putting on an informational meeting Friday? Yeah, at the library. At the library, 6, 6 o'clock, 6.30? 6 6.30. Is there a Zoom link? There will yeah. be. I don't email it to whoever I should email it to. Yeah, I don't see that on the website. It would be really helpful if, for this matter, if we could just keep any agendas for any meetings that are going to be related to this topic, especially those uh, like like having that available on the website is really important for individuals who aren't physically located in Vermont full time. Um, so things like this, if there's like, like, I, I just want to make sure that everyone that is interested in this is going to be getting notified of every single opportunity to uh, share their concerns on the matter. Is this our responsibility? Um, uh, yeah, we could definitely help with the Moyle Community House. Uh, Kim is going to send me the digital flyer to, uh, to, if the board wants to, we can post on the homepage. And yeah. Lamoille Community yeah. House doesn't have <coughs> their website yet either. I don't think I'm on it right now. It wasn't on there. I looked. Yeah. So. Has it been on from? We're still getting the link created. That's fine. Yeah. Thank We're trying to figure out our tech, technology of the library right now, but we'll get it. We'll get the laptop up. Yeah, and I, we have somewhat of an email list from these meetings. So if anybody definitely wants a copy of the March 10th notice, they can email me and we'll get it to you, which is the admin at HydeParkBT.com. So I'll post that on the website and then anybody that wants a specific copy of that can shoot a note over. Anybody else questions? Okay. Um, yes. We need a motion to adjourn. No, no. we have to talk about the fuel for the highway. Yeah. Where's that? Add, added item. <laughs> oh yeah, you added it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I did. didn't mark it down on here. Uh, mark came to me and said, Ryan called. Said we're down to 700 gallons on fuel, which is a good time to not suck the bottom out of the 10,000 gallon tank. So we would order normally a bulk of 8,000 gallons. The only problem is we have about 40% of the money we need due to the oil, uh, gas, the diesel price, sorry. Diesel price right now is 3.55, which is almost $2 less than the last time we ordered it, which was back in October, November yeah. last year. So that's good news, but it's not as low as what we used in the budgeting, which was down around $3, which was what it was 20, 20 months ago or so. So the estimated cost on the one load is 28,400 and there's 11,800 basically left over in the budget. So the difference we would uh, basically come out of the paving line. We're not doing paving this year to try to catch up with the center road project. So Jennifer will have to find the $16,000 difference otherwise to pay off the center road in, in June. That's the immediate plan anyway, is that we weren't planning on 16,700 being needed. Mark did say that would get us through June 30. So that's somewhat of a good news. The price came down and it will get us through the rest of this year. Yeah. But anytime we go over budget, we like to bring it to the minutes of the board. So you all have that in your forefront. So is there a way of purchasing? Oh, you said that last time. Uh, I, remember uh, everyone I said I thought it would, and it did. 
I don't know. I don't know. Neither did they. I said, is there a way of purchasing uh, uh, with what we have remaining, and then in hopes that the price will continue to go down, and then but have a plan in place to purchase the remainder? See if we can get down to three dollars by when this gets down to seven hundred again. Yeah. The, you know, the only thing you could do if you don't want to spend that money is you could go to one of the filling stations and buy fuel out of them until you see what happens if you don't want to buy. Still pay, you're still paying for the same amount of fuel. You're still, yeah, you're still, still paying, but you don't have to come up with the, the But boat. it's a paperwork nightmare. What right? is it? It's not why we decided to not get to a, do that. To get, a, to get a credit card over there? It's... No, because of the taxes. No, but as far as I think, did they get it upstairs, they got to file for the taxes. Yeah. 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 What's the, what's the diesel at the pump now? I don't even know. Uh, I don't know either. <laughs> it goes up every day and then down every day. It's all 44. I, I think it's the best way to do it is right the way we usually do it. All right. You're not going to get better than bulk price. Huh? You're not going to get better than bulk, bulk price. price. Yeah. Right. At three fifty five. I was gonna say at three fifty five. I'd like to see it come down another dollar. But it ain't yeah, no, I think if you go for a half a half load, for example, I think is what Brian was saying. Right. Um, we'd have to get pricing on that too, because it might be different pricing if but you don't get a full the, tanker. The, the less you buy, the more it is. The price goes. Yeah, up. the cheapest that's is what, what we. Saying. The yeah. cheapest what we do now is get a full tanker load. That's the cheapest that we can get it at. So if we go to half truck or half tank, then right. that gets... Let's get some numbers and look at it next meeting. I, I, right? On, yeah, but on Wednesday. Down to yeah. No, no, yes. we only got 700 down. We, we have two yeah. days. We, literally tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Our meeting yeah, is in two days. Right. We're meeting on Wednesday. I thought you meant like in two weeks. Yeah, no, right. like, uh, yeah. 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 Well, we can get a price on a half load, basically, and see what that is. Right. If it's, yeah. if it's yeah. five, six dollars an hour, we're going to get 8,000 gallons. Yeah. You're not going to get much cheaper than three fifty five, but at least then we can visit it Wednesday. We have real numbers it, to compare to instead only, of just throwing. It dropped two dollars in six months. Right. So if it keeps going, it might drop a little bit more in three months. Was when we'll, we'll need to put more in the tank. I thought they said next month it's going to start going back up again. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I think I heard that. And who knows what Every this new article is going to do to it? They got this new article like coming that, out. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we, do you want to wait till Wednesday? We just get a price. See what I, I'm fine. See, that. see what I'm it is. Then we have real numbers. You know, just yep. Yeah. Okay, we can do that. <clears throat> Thank you. You know roughly what you're going through a day, right? Or a week? Depends on how much it snows. That's true. <laughs> Can't get a real number for that. <laughs> Right. I'm going to take a reading every week so I can, yeah. I can get an average. Yeah, I can average it out. Yeah. Yeah, let us know when, based on your average, when you're scraping bottom. I'd say it was two weeks. It's uh, 8,000, sorry, it's 7, 8,000 divided by 13 weeks. Whatever that is. I think the last 600 about 600 yeah. I think the last two and a half Quick weeks math. is 2200 gallons so, 1000 gallons a week yeah so it's not it's not light it's not yeah. light usage in the winter yeah right but it'll be lighter <laughs> later and they're not running hopefully 24s yeah we'll we'll be able to get through the next two days at least right Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how long does it take to get the fuel? It, uh, that day. Yeah, usually. That day? Yeah. No, a few days. A couple of days? Okay. Okay. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor, seeing if I have a thing. Aye. 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 Aye.